Hi everyone, welcome to um, another video on Grade 9 Science Explorations, and we're going to continue looking at um, ecosystems today. And what I wanted to talk about today was, um, what is an aquatic ecosystem? So we're going to look at who lives in an aquatic ecosystem, what an aquatic ecosystem is, and how humans impact aquatic ecosystems. So let's start with what is an aquatic ecosystem? So it's any ecosystem in water. And that's it. Um, we can divide them into two different categories, one being a freshwater ecosystem and the other one being a marine ecosystem. And these are um, broken apart based on um, the amount of salt in the water. So when we think of water in Ontario, we think of freshwater ecosystems. Um, we don't have much salt water uh, in Ontario, unless you go very far north to Moosonee and James Bay, where you have a, a marine or saltwater ecosystem. And um, these are two very different uh, kinds of ecosystems, and we're going to look mostly at freshwater ecosystems, because certainly in southern Ontario, we only have freshwater ecosystems. So let's look at ecosystems uh, in terms of a couple of different divisions that uh, people give to them. So for example, one of them is we can have a lentic freshwater ecosystem, which is not flowing water. So when you think of a pond or a lake, that's a lentic ecosystem. We can have a lotic ecosystem, and that's flowing water. So you have streams and rivers. Uh, the organisms that live in these two different kinds of ecosystems, lentic and lotic ecosystems, or ponds and lakes and streams and rivers, are often very different. And sometimes they're the same. Sometimes you'll have organisms that are the same in ponds and streams and lakes and rivers, and sometimes um, you have very different species that live in each. And finally, you can look at wetlands. And wetlands are um, areas that are considered to be aquatic because there's so much water in them that the soil is saturated with water, at least for part of the year. And there's lots of different kinds of wetlands. So if you're curious about them, you can see down here I've put a little extension. Um, if you'd like to investigate what's the difference between a swamp and a bog and a fen and a muskeg and a marsh, and there's more. Um, you can certainly do some research yourself and find out what distinguishes a swamp from a bog or um, from a muskeg or a marsh. And there's lots of different ways that these are defined. So um, let's look at marine ecosystems really kind of quickly. Uh, it helps if you've ever taken a trip somewhere to the ocean to actually understand what these are. But we can have salt marshes. So these are these are what would normally be a, a marsh, but because they're near the ocean, there's salt water in them, and as the tide comes in and goes out, they, uh, they exchange water. You can have a mangrove, and a mangrove swamp, it's sometimes called, uh, is dominated by a specific kind of plant species called mangroves. There are estuaries where a river meets the ocean, and you get a, a strange kind of water situation there called brackish. There are lagoons, and there are beaches. There are coral reefs. There are pelagic ecosystems where um, you're in the deep ocean, but you're not near shore and you're not near the bottom. And organisms that sometimes only live in the, the uh, pelagic region of the ocean, um, such as uh, swordfish or tuna, are called pelagic organisms. And then there's the sea floor, and this can be quite deep or this can be um, quite shallow, uh, but it does offer another kind of ecosystem. So let's take a look, <clears throat> if we were to look at an aquatic ecosystem near us at Stephen Lewis Secondary School or in Peel Region, let's take a look at who lives in these areas. I'm going to start by talking about the producers in these ecosystems. So mostly it's algae or aquatic plants. And these organisms capture sunlight and convert it into uh, sugars, which all other organisms, including themselves, use. Uh, and these algae or aquatic plants may be consumed by a variety of insects, maybe dragonflies, uh, dragonfly larvae, or mayflies and their larvae. And in turn, these, of course, get eaten, and these would be eaten by frogs. So we go from having a, um, a primary consumer to having a secondary consumer of uh, organisms. Algae is also eaten frequently by mollusks, and you can think of a snail as being a mollusk. There are other crustaceans in the water, such as Daphnia, that uh, consume algae out of the water. And these support the rest of the food chain. So these are our primary consumers. And our secondary consumers will consume them. <clears throat> so amphibians were a secondary consumer. 
Reptiles such as snakes and turtles will eat frogs and salamanders, and in turn, uh, reptiles will be consumed maybe by a raccoon. So a snake would be eaten by a raccoon or a coyote or a fox. We also have fish. They're a very common aquatic um, organism, and they'll consume just about everything they can find in the area, including other fish and birds. And you can think of hawks, ducks, herons, all kinds of uh, birds are dependent on aquatic ecosystems. Uh, some are more aquatic than others, so ducks are very dependent on aquatic ecosystems and they spend most of their time on or in an aquatic ecosystem, whereas a hawk or an eagle would um, eat fish out of the ecosystem, but probably would not depend on it solely. Okay, So there's lots of different organisms that are associated with an aquatic ecosystem near you. And what would be really useful for you to do right now is to take these organisms that we've just talked about and build a food web. Let's talk about how humans impact aquatic ecosystems. And I'll just start at the top here. And if you look at uh, pesticides, when you spray your lawn for weeds, um, those pesticides will often, if it rains, they will run into the water. And if it's an herbicide designed to kill plants, guess what? It will likely kill algae and plants within the aquatic ecosystem. If you fertilize your lawn, you're putting uh, fertilizers on the lawn. And what that ends up doing is uh, if it rains and it runs down a storm drain, it will often also end up in uh, an aquatic ecosystem. And that causes algae to grow. And strangely, even though algae is a producer, if you grow too much algae, it's a bad thing because it will um, shade out other algae that has grown and you end up with an algae bloom that ends up decomposing and collapsing. And actually, instead of producing oxygen, as it decomposes, it will absorb the oxygen from the water and you can actually kill an aquatic ecosystem if you put too much nutrients in it because you'll encourage too much algae to grow. Uh, road chemicals such as salt and oil also when it rains and snow melts in the spring, uh, will run into an aquatic ecosystem and that changes the salinity of the aquatic ecosystem and, and the salt content can be very detrimental and bad for a variety of aquatic organisms. The oil as well will sit and float on the surface of the water and it actually acts like a seal and can prevent oxygen from getting into the water. Um, power production, if you burn coal or some forms of natural gas can cause acid rain. And that acid rain is an acid, and it can be actually as acidic as Coca-Cola. And if it gets into the water, it will change the acidity or the pH of the water and can cause a great deal of harm to fish gills and insect gills and can cause a huge problem. Uh, we're starting to find that climate change is a huge issue. Um, climate change and uh, increasing temperature can uh, reduce the amount of rainfall in an area and is actually causing a lot of wetlands around the world to dry up and rivers to not be flowing as much. And so this is also a problem. Invasive species. This is actually a problem in uh, Osprey Marsh, which is just around the corner from Stephen Lewis Secondary School in Peel region, where a lot of pond plants from people's backyards are being dumped into the marsh and in the fall you can go and you can see uh, a large variety of actually water hyacinths that should only live in the Nile River in Africa actually growing in Osprey Marsh and what these do is that they outcompete other native um, indigenous plants and causes a huge problem. So don't put your pond plants into Osprey Marsh or any marshes in Ontario. Uh, same thing goes for a variety of turtle species that are being released into uh, lakes and rivers in Ontario or goldfish. You also shouldn't put goldfish because it became too big for your tank. You shouldn't put goldfish in a lake or a river in Ontario because they do end up surviving and uh, out competing other fish species. Overexploitation around the world is a huge issue for aquatic ecosystems. Um, if we take too many fish, from um, an ecosystem, we disrupt the food chain and uh, we can certainly cause problems with uh, the ecosystem and the food web that is uh, present there. For a very long time, waste dumping was a huge issue in Ontario and all of North America where factories would simply dump their effluent, um, all their waste into a river and it would be taken downstream and out of sight, out of mind.
Mississauga used to dump a lot of its waste into, uh, so its sewage waste, into the Credit River and let it drift downstream until we realized that we were polluting and causing far too much uh, damage by adding a lot of nutrients because sewage is a nutrient. And if you, again, add too much uh, nutrient to an aquatic ecosystem, you can get an algae bloom, which ends up decomposing and absorbing oxygen from the water and thereby killing flip fish and organisms and destroying the food web that's there. Finally, the last impact that I'm going to talk about is habitat destruction. If uh, you were in Mississauga in um, the 1970s, a lot of the wetlands in Mississauga were viewed as being in the way of development and they were bulldozed under and buried. Um, there's lots and lots of streams in a lot of cities around the world that have been buried and put into tubes and their ecosystem and food webs and food chains completely destroyed. So we've done a lot in Mississauga to bury um, ecosystems like this and Brampton and Caledon as well is uh, well in the process of bulldozing many ecosystems and filling them in and putting houses on top of them. So there's lots of habitat destruction that occurs as well.